So, sorry, Weech, I had technical difficulties there. So we're, That's quite all right. But, uh, hey, we're back here with another episode of uh, Buckle Up with the Boys with uh, special guest uh, Weej Fernand. Weej, how are you doing tonight? I'm great. How are you tonight, Drew? Oh, good, good. Um, so there's a lot to touch on tonight, Weej. Um, I, I wanted to ask you, um, for the people that don't know you, there's a lot of people from our area that know you. Um but uh, where did you grow up and uh, where did you go to high school and college, Weech? I grew up in Ridgeway and I went to high school at ECC, Elk County Christian it was at the time, and then to St. Bonaventure University. Okay. Um, Weech, when you were in high, sky, uh, high school, what sports did you uh, play at ECC? Well, in the fall, I golfed. In the winter, I played basketball. My freshman year, I actually played tennis in the spring. Um, but that, that was it. Um, after my freshman year, I did not play a spring sport. I just played a lot of basketball in my driveway. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I, I wanted to touch on too. So people that know me, we each know that, you know, and watch the show know I went to St. Bonaventure. Um, when you were looking at colleges, what really drew, was St. Bonaventure always your, your college or was it other schools that you looked at? Um, I, 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 to be honest, I didn't really look at any schools, including St. Bonaventure. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> I, I really, you know, was enamored, I guess, with, with basketball. I loved the game. I loved everything about it and uh, wanted to be a part of a Division One basketball program. So I, I thought about, you know, smaller, I guess, Division One programs. I wanted a Catholic school. Right. Um, so... St. Bonaventure was the first school I applied to. Okay. I got my acceptance about a week later. And then just, I, I never applied anywhere else. That was the only place I applied. I would have applied to St. Francis and Duquesne as well, for sure. Okay. But, uh, that's probably would have been about it. Okay. Did you know anybody at Bonaventure? Nobody. I, 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 I didn't know anybody. Uh, as it turned out, there were a few people there that I knew, but I didn't know that they were there until I okay. got there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and when you were looking, was teaching always an option when you went to college or what was? I had uh, really no interest in teaching when I went to college. I, I, uh, you know, I was pretty shy person. I, I did not enjoy public speaking whatsoever. So I didn't really think teaching would be a, a good fit. My, in fact, my uh, advisor, my math advisor always tried to talk me into taking education classes early on. And I said, no, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to do that. As it turned out, he was, he was pretty right to push me in that direction in that direction. And yeah, so that, that was not my intent. I, I love math. So that's what I majored in. Um, it was a good fit for me. Right. I wouldn't right. have changed it, I don't think. Yeah, no. It, it, it's just funny because now, like, everybody knows WeJ. Like, in our area, if, if you're from outside of Elk County, it's just funny how, you like, you were shy back then, WeJ, but more now, like, everybody knows you. Like, everybody wants to say hi to you. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I've, I've, always, I've always been friendly. Right. Um, I don't mind speaking speaking to people one-on-one -on -one at all uh right. i enjoy people okay. but as soon as there's a crowd i mean i'm not i'm not particularly unshy still today if it's a crowd of people i'm right. i'm just i don't know if it intimidates me or okay. just makes me you know, I'm, I'm an introverted person for sure so i think just the sheer numbers of people I guess I want to be personable to them all and can't be at the same time. Right. And I think that makes me just a little uncomfortable. Yeah. No. But um, so let's see here. Next question. Um, yeah. Well, we already touched on, you know, what drew you in the St. Bonaventure. It was the atmosphere. Right, Weege? Yeah. Uh, so I, I did visit a after I accepted, after I was accepted and accepted my acceptance, I guess. Uh, yeah. I did visit and, and really did enjoy the, it was a, it was fortunately a very good fit. Uh, okay. As you know, it's just a nice um, community oriented yeah. uh, place. Um, I, I, 
I would not trade my years there for anything. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I think a lot of athletes, and I don't want to speak for them, Weech, but I think a lot of athletes that you coached, um, including myself, went, that went to St. Bonaventure, um, you know, thank you because it's like a home away from home. You know, you know what I mean? It's sure. It, it doesn't feel like college. It's right. It's, I mean, you have all these assignments and homework, but besides that, you're comfortable. Yeah. You know? I agree. Yeah. And I was too. You, you, uh, did I know anybody there? I didn't, but I was never uncomfortable there even for, for a minute. Yeah. Um, so, we, you know, going to ACC for high school, how much did that prepare you for life at, you know, SBU academically, spiritually, and athletically? I, I thought I was uh, pr pretty prepared for school um, in all of those realms. Yeah, you know, I went to St. Leo's for for my grade school, I guess, and and the ECC. Both of them prepared me very well spiritually and gave me a good foundation that I wasn't going to shake too much. Um, the, the academics here, I thought, prepared me very well for for all of my courses at Bonaventure. I never struggled with anything, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, my roommate, who was a very good guy, and all of the friends I had in terms of study skills, I was probably more prepared than, than any of them. I wouldn't right. say more prepared than anybody there, but more prepared than the circle of people I hung out with. And, you know, uh, athletically, um, I was, you know, again, I, I was definitely focused on basketball at that point in my life. And uh, Coach Straub does a pretty nice job of teaching the game of basketball. Right. So I thought, I was pretty prepared for that as well. Yeah, yeah. In my head, anyway. Right. Well, no, and and I and we'll, we'll touch on it later here. But um, we for the people like, can you just talk about? I think I'm jumping ahead here, but I, we're on okay. the topic. The whole process of you, and it amazes me when I look back. You know, when you coached me and you talked about walking on. Can you talk about that whole process at St. Bonaventure with what you had to go through and you know to get your dream? Sure. Okay. Um, I, I guess I, I, some, some would say I'm a stubborn person. Some would say I'm determined, I guess it, probably a little bit of both. Um, but so I, I contacted the coaches, um, at some point, I think it was before I got there and, and they were very inviting and, and, uh, said, yeah, you're, you're welcome to try out for the team. And they invited me to be a part of you know, the preseason stuff, conditioning and all of that stuff. And uh, I probably helped more with that than anything else um, in terms of uh, being the first runner done and all of that stuff with conditioning. Mm -hmm. um, so that my freshman year, I did try out. I did not make the team. My After my freshman year, I spent a lot of time in the gym, a lot of time in the weight room, that was part of my issue was I just wasn't athletic enough. Um, so I got bigger, I got stronger. And by the end of my freshman year, I was pretty familiar with the coaching staff. They had seen me in the gym quite a bit. Now, unlike you, you know, we didn't have the Richter center on campus. We, the Riley center was where everybody played basketball, the general population. So it wasn't, wasn't just the basketball team that used Riley center. It was everybody. So the coaching staff would look out their window and see who was playing. They saw me out there all the time. They were uncomfortable enough with me that they invited me to work basketball camp that summer. But then they, they got fired and a new coaching staff came in. So I tried out again. Um, again, they were very inviting. Uh, th that would have been Coach Barron, who I could not wow. say uh, a, a bad word about ever. Uh but I did not make the team my sophomore year either. So back to the weight room and back to the gym and uh, another summer of hard work. And then my junior year, finally, I, I actually ran cross country in the fall. And I think that helped me make the team in the sense that uh, you know, basketball was almost too important to me. Cross country gave me some success in something else. And then I relaxed a little bit more and and was more of myself going through the tryout process. And um, that, I guess that's, that's the story. Sorry right. for, the, for the long monologue. We 
I, I will tell you this right now. I will sit here all day and listen to you talk. Uh, you 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 take as long as you want, okay? Thanks. But, you know, but I wanted to ask you. So, what do you what do you think drove you to not want to quit? Like you could have just said, "Hey, I'm done with it. Whatever. They don't want me." Right? Yeah. Again, you, some people would say I have a. I'm pretty determined. I I personally think I'm just pretty stubborn. I had something. I've always been a problem solver. I guess. Uh, math, life in general, um, I guess. Uh, so the process of improvement has always been, I guess, very good for me, very enjoyable for me. Mm-hmm. So even if I never made the team, the process was still very, very enjoyable for me. So it, it's something I wanted Right. But it was also at the same thing, same time as wanting it. It was very rewarding just going through the process. Like I said, even if I never made the team, I'm not going to say that it, it was very fulfilling to make the team. Right. Um, it felt great. Um, it, but it wasn't, it, again, it wasn't a finish line for me. I still wanted to keep growing and getting better. Uh, so, you know, those, I guess, uh, material rewards along the way are very, um, well, I, I can't even think of the word, Drew, uh, fulfilling, I said. Self-fulfilling. S- they help with your motivation along the way, but I, I never really needed those things. I, I would have kept working on my game even if, even if I never made right. the team. Right. And I, and I think... I think a lot of athletes, Weech, and I mean, I've been around them. I mean, you've coached marvelous athletes over the years. Um, I, I think sometimes, though, I think people give up way too early and, and they never really get to see their full, I guess, full potential. You know what I mean? So, yeah, uh, um, for sure. Yeah. I don't know. You know, every individual is a little bit different. Some people right. probably just, you know, make the the self-discovery that, it isn't a passion for them and it's not that they're really giving up. They're just looking for the passion um, that will be uh, something that is a little bit more rewarding for them. Yeah. yeah, I was lucky that I found it, found several, I guess, passions very early in life and and continue to enjoy them to this day. So I'm sure there are some people who also, stop a little early even though it, it, it is their right. passion but i think a lot of times people are just you know li- right. life life's hard it's it, it, it yeah. there are so many things you can choose um sometimes things just aren't a good fit for whatever reason right even if you have the talent sometimes it just isn't the passion right right no i agree um I guess it goes into our next question here, Weech. You know, when playing basketball for SBU, what was it like being part of such a rich tradition? Because there, there's some notable guys. I think a lot of people out there don't know that you, you know, were around or got to play against or play with. You know, is there any notable names that you wanted to? Talk well, about? I mean, it, first of all, uh, Coach Barron himself um, right. tr- treated me very, very well, but better than I deserve to be treated in terms of what I could contribute to the team and all of my teammates were the same way. Yeah. I, I could contribute hard work. I could make sure other people were working hard. I I was not going to score 20 points a game or four points a game for that matter. But uh, all of those guys um, treated me as an equal Mm -hmm. um, and rooted for me and, and, you know, gave me, gave me pointers, yelled at me like they'd yell at anybody else, which is, right. I enjoyed that. Right. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, da- David Vanderpool was, was probably our, our best player. Mm-hmm. He's been a long time coach in the NBA at this point in USA basketball. Um, he, he's always mentioned um, as head coaching almost every summer. He, he he's a, on the short list of, potential head coaches when those vacancies um, come up mm-hmm. uh, and in the a10 in that in those days was was loaded I mean there were probably 10 NBA players playing in the a10 at that time the temple had 
Aaron McKee and Eddie Jones, Rick Brunson, and UMass was number one in the country. Marcus Camby, Lou Rowe, Michael Williams, probably don't remember the, the guards, but Marcus Camby and Lou Rowe both were NBA players. Rhode Island had a couple NBA players. George Washington had a couple. He had a seven-footer. Yinka Dare played in the NBA for a couple of years. Oh. Um, so the A-10 was really strong in those days. It was it was a neat atmosphere. Yeah. 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 No, and I'll tell you, we, we've experienced it. I, I was in the stands, though. Um, the Riley Center on game day, that place is a madhouse. Uh, yeah, it's, it's rocking for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. When I was there, it was even a little bit more intimidating in the sense that the student section was right be behind the visitor's bench. Oh, wow. So all the students were right on top of whoever was coming to Riley Center, you know, oh. traveling the at least two hours from Buffalo to, to get there, plus the flight from wherever they were coming from. That was that was not an easy, easy win for sure for anybody, just in the matter of fact that you're traveling at least probably four hours to get there, maybe five. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, the swing over, a lot of people that know me, we each know, I mean, I, we're kind of linked because I did cross country and and all that. I, I, I think there's a lot of people out there and I, I don't think fully know the story. So how did you end up on the cross country team at St. Bonaventure? Well, um, you know, as I didn't make the team my freshman year at, right. at Bonaventure, my uncle asked me to participate in canoeing triathlons with him he he, he was uh not really uh all that excited about running anymore he's a very good cyclist and uh like canoeing so there were there were lots of canoeing triathlons in the area ridgeway had one they, they were all over the state not really all over the country uh and so he asked me after I didn't make the team, he knew that was pretty important to me. But when I didn't, he said, hey, would you like to join me for some triathlons and s see what you can do? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, as long as I have the time, I may as well. So yeah. I started I started to run, uh, you know, through the winter and uh, in the spring were, were there were a few triathlons in the spring. So uh that was my freshman year, sophomore year. When I didn't make the team, I was back running some more. Uh, wasn't great, but on campus, I didn't run into too many people who were better than me in terms of I never got past running to the fitness center was down the street at that, that time. It was about a mile and a half from campus where the tennis courts are, the indoor tennis courts, kind of okay. behind friendlies. Um, I'm, I know the facility's still there and the uh, university still owns it, but I don't know how much they use it. Okay. Yeah. I think the tennis team still uses it. Yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah. eventually I ran into a couple of the cross country guys and they said, you should think about running cross country. And so mm -hmm. that's how I ended up running cross country. Oh my goodness. Which I, it's just, I, I mean, I think everybody, I mean, we're only, you know, 19 minutes in, but I mean, just the grit and determination to want to go do stuff. Like I just, <laughs> like, uh, I, like I said, I, I I I like learning. I like growing. I like you know those things are for whatever reason. I think people do in general, right. but they, they've always been just uh, a part of me. I I, yeah. I I can't stop reading. I can't stop experiencing things. It's just a, a part of me. Yeah, but um, what was I gonna? So the story, I, and I, I hope I. All these years, we, you know, there's new guys coming on the team at St. Bonaventure, and I try to connect with them. Um, and, you know, was it true back then you guys had to drive yourselves to the meets? No, or, we, we, okay. no. Okay. But, but we didn't have the, we didn't have like a, that big Bonibus or whatever you want to call it. We, we just right. took vans. And okay. uh, so we usually needed two vans uh, okay. to get everybody there. So coach was always looking for somebody to, to help us, to help out um to drive right. so it, it, our coach was the uh ROTC guy so oh. usually one of the other ROTC guys would drive the other van yeah we so and they they were great great guys as right. well right yeah. yeah no but uh no it's just funny you know it, it, i just remember you know coach Mackey's like you guys are in luxury you don't know what it was like for them back in the 90s and i'm like oh i <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, it wasn't but, 
It wasn't luxurious for sure. Right. right. But um, let's see here. Um, you know, which after graduating, you know, from St. Bonaventure was your decision to always return back to Elk County or what was. I really, I, I really didn't know. Um, you know, I, I, I didn't make a conscious decision really t- to go anywhere. Okay. Uh, I was going to go to medical school, actually. Um, I never knew that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, cool. That that was, I guess, in the back of my mind, I knew that I didn't want to do that, but I didn't know what else I was going to do. I still didn't necessarily want to be a teacher. Right. Um, but one day, just walking out of the YMCA playing basketball, I was walking home, and I thought, you know, I. I, I really just, I can't leave this. This is too much a part of me. And I have too much I'd like to share with others uh, to just let it go. So that's, I guess, when I made the decision that I at least wanted to coach. And after I made that decision, I quickly found a job teaching. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, and then I guess just leading into it too, with your, how did you get into coaching, you know, at ACC? Like what was, well, coach Straub just said, Hey, we're looking for a junior high assistant. So junior high basketball assistant. So that's how I got that. And then at the end of the junior high basketball season, they said, Hey, we're looking for a track and field assistant. So it was actually the sprinters coach, my first year coaching. That's, that's all I I just coached the sprinters, a uh, very good four by one team that year, actually um, okay. missed out on a state qualifying run by a 10th of a second. They were a 10th of a second slow, um, but great group of, that was the guys, not the girls. And then uh, by the time the fall rolled around, they said, Hey, we could use a, an assistant for the cross country team. So that's how I, I, was introduced to coaching both, like I said, I, I was still a basketball first person for sure in those days. And right. the other two just kind of, you know, I, I, I think, right. you know, I, I, you know very well, I'm a very faith filled person. You know, I think yes, you are. Um, God has a way of directing us where we're supposed to be if we're just listening. And uh, I think. Right. I think I've tried to listen. I haven't always, but at least try to. Well, I mean, which I, I told myself I wasn't going to get choked up because every time I talk to you, I, I, I get, uh, but I, I will tell you, and I believe in that because there's so many lives and, and young ladies and, and men that you've, lives you've touched. Mm-hmm. It, there, the big guy said, hey, we, we need you over here for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that, that's a reciprocal agreement that, you know, that, right. that, that all of those, athletes who I've had the fortune and opportunity to coach have certainly uh, impacted me quite a bit as well. Right. right. No. And I, I, I got to touch on, you know, I just, I didn't want to throw too much of my stuff in, but I, you know, I just have to say, I think a lot of the athletes that you've coached, like I, I remember going in the seventh grade year, you know, we have that spring thing in the spring and you decide what fall sport you're going to do. You know, I did, Cross country did not look enjoyable to me, but like when I talked to you, it was like, okay, well, you know, it's not so bad. You know what I mean? Like your welcoming presence, I think makes athletes want to come try not that enjoyable of a sport, but you know what I mean? I I get it. Right. Right. (laughs) You know what I mean? But, um, you know, I mean, where, where does the positive energy presence come from? Like, you you know what I mean? Uh, I, I, again, I, I've been I've been very blessed throughout my life to have some pretty good role models, both uh, family. Uh, my family has been wonderful. Grandparents are wonderful. Parents are wonderful. My siblings are wonderful. Uh, I can't say I had a, a, an uncaring teacher who didn't make me feel very important at some point, you know, along the way. Every one of them. I can't remember a coach who didn't, you know make me feel good about myself. So, you know, I guess that, that just kind of, kind of became internalized that, uh, if I'm going to do what, what I'm doing, then I, I, I better do the same, same thing others have done for me. 
Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and again, I, I go go back early in our convers earlier in our conversation. I yeah. I really enjoy people, and yeah. you know we're all different, right. and you just I, I I enjoy learning who people are. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody says hello in a different way. Everybody smiles in a different way. Everybody lights up in a different way. And I mean, we all have negative things about us too, but it's right. just wonderful to see that people becoming themselves, I guess. Right. Right. No. And, and I think I, I just remember, and, and I was, I was going to bring up stories, you know, later on, but the one story I got to say, we, I remember we go on runs together. Okay. Yeah. And I'd be dying. Okay. And, and I think both of us were, were feeling pretty, pretty tired. At sure. Point. Yeah. <laughs> But you would always wave to people. And I was like, he is still trying to give, you know, uh, someone a smile or just say, you know, hello, just, uh, you know, make them feel good. And I'm like, you know, we're both dying over here and I can barely yeah. breathe. And he's still able to, you know, he's still yeah. finding a way to wave to somebody. You know what I mean? <laughs> sure. Yeah, I guess. I, I, yeah. I Again, I, I, I think I don't always do that consciously. I do. Right. Sometimes I'm just doing it. But. Uh, I do think, you know, on, on this earth, people are the most important thing. Even mm -hmm. if I'm in pain, somebody of running, it's right. a self-inflicted pain, as you're saying, <laughs> right? But, um, you know, that person driving down the road is or walking across the street is, you know, the most important person on earth, really. It's the only person I see other than you right while, while I'm running with you, but I know I'm going to say three words to you in 10 seconds. So that right. other person is the most important person on earth to me. Cause that's the only person I can say hello to right. or right. cheer them up or make right. sure that their day is a yeah. smidgen better. Right. Yeah. No, no, no. And that's just the, you know, we, I tell people this all the time, you know, cause <clears throat> you know, I went to UCC and you coached me and then, you know, went to, uh, Bonas and, and Coach Mac coached me. I, I, I have, I tell people all the time because they, you know, ask, you know, you were coached by Weejay. You know, what's your, um, the guy is just a, a walk in positivity. Like, I just, that's what I say every time. Like, there's, the, he, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen you have a bad day. Like, <laughs> I, I can't, can say I don't remember ever having a bad day. I mean, right. bad things happen. Right. But, you know, again, I guess I look at that as again a faith filled person right as a as a challenge that i'm supposed to learn from right. um so make the most of it and don't dwell on it too much bad things happen to everybody so you right. may as well not get all too upset about it and right. keep keep forging ahead yeah but um there's one thing i have to touch on there's a lot of athletes which i i I asked you last night if I was allowed to put out a little ad thing about this episode. And there's a lot of athletes that you coached or, you know, either our teams ran against, you know, down the road, the athletes reached out. Now, I don't want to give away all of our secrets, but, um, you know, the story of the bamboo former, can you just touch on that? Cause that's been, I feel a cornerstone. Have you always used that since? I probably didn't use it from, from the, uh, beginning of my coaching career, but very early, uh, for sure. Right. Um, I don't remember wh where I came upon it. I guess philosophically, I've always used it, right. but I haven't always given the story, I guess. So, yeah. so do, do you want me to, uh, I guess, give the brief version of the story? Yeah, because I, I'll probably screw it up and I don't want to ruin I don't want to no. ruin it because it's too right. grateful. It's too. So, <laughs> no, I'm sure you wouldn't screw it up. But the, I guess the nuts and bolts of the bamboo farmer is, is this, right? A, a farmer from a farming community, uh, you know, wheat and potatoes and, and things of that nature, wants to find a new crop and he decides on bamboo and he plants his crop and nothing grows for an entire year. And his neighbors are kind of questioning, hey, are you really doing the right thing here? And nothing grows the second year. And his neighbors are really poking fun of him at that point. Mm -hmm. And then the third year, after he's you know taken care of this bamboo for a, a, 
almost three consecutive years fertilizing and watering and putting all sorts of just as much effort as the other people. Um, his crop grows about a foot a day for a month, you know, sprouts up about 30 feet. And uh, the way bamboo works is it, it has to grow a root system. Uh, and that's what happens the first two years. So, uh, and then after that, it shoots up, like we said, about a foot a day. So the, the moral of the story and the way we apply it to, to improvement is, you know, sometimes you're going to get made fun of for making a commitment to something and not see any improvement whatsoever for all of your hard work and, and time put in. But all of that, sometimes, sometimes we do see improvement right away, but oftentimes it takes time and effort and then at the end of the process, all of a sudden, everything starts coming into place and you make huge improvements and all of your hard work is indeed worth it, um, both mentally and physically, and I guess even emotionally and spiritually. But without all of that hard work and drudgery, um, it doesn't really happen. Right. No. And and I'll tell you, there is... I, I can think of two guys that you coached, Weech, um, and myself that still kind of use that in a way, even though I'm not running. I, I wish I was more, you know, running, you know, still. Um, but I, I use that. You can use that in anything. Really Absolutely. Like it's, right. You know, and I was yeah. like, and I told a, a coworker, you know, a couple of weeks ago, she's like, you know, how do you deal with, cause you know, deal with, you know, sometimes stressful situations. And I'm like, I got to go back to this bamboo farber. And I, and I think I diced it because it was not even close to what you said. Yeah, that's all right. You take, you, you take from it what you need, right? right. It, it isn't, it isn't the same story for everybody, which is right. great. Right. Yeah. No, but um, no, it, that's just, it's just uh, another, you know, and I, and I think back to, and I, and I don't know if you still use it or not, but you know, if people listen to have them watch, you know, this, little documentary kind of story on Rick and Dick Hoyt. I still yeah. watch that video you showed me before the Iron Man. Sure. Like, yeah. I don't, and I cry every time. Like, yeah, I do too. Right? I do too, all these years later. Yeah. You it just know, hits you. I mean, yeah. but it does. It does. And it's, uh, you know, it's something. I mean, there's just, uh, and which the other thing too, and I talked to, you know, Eric and, and Josh weren't able to be here tonight, but um, the, the, and I don't want to give away too many more of your secrets, but they're not, they're it, not secrets. So okay. All right. No worries. Okay. The, I'm trying to like the meditation. Remember how yep. we've been in the gym. I, how did you kind of develop like that? Like where, where does that, um, I, I guess fr from a variety of places, um, you know, in general and, and, and the world is becoming more so right. We, we have all have anxieties. Um, yes myself included. Um, again, I like to learn. So it, all of that, that stuff comes from reading. It also comes from, you know, I spent some time in school at the University of California, Davis. And one of the professors that I uh, was a TA for uh, guided meditation for all the athletes at UC Davis. So um, I, I got to at least see what he did. Um, and I guess just build upon that, you know, it, it, essentially we call it meditation, sometimes visualization, um, relaxation, all really built into one, um, just kind of finding that calm center and, and, uh, and it has changed over the years as I learned more, but it, it's essentially the, the same thing, just relax and visualize what you want to have happening and, and, you know, that all research says that, you know, even with physical tasks, our, our muscles actually fire if we visualize mentally, not all of them fire, obviously, because you're not, you're not jumping or running while you're visualizing, but your, your synapses are firing while you're visualizing. So even at a physical level, you're, you're getting something out of it. And, you know, from all of your running and basketball and everything else that uh, the mind is probably more important than the body for most of those tasks. And, and I think, and I, I don't, you know, when I come back home 
you know, because I'm up here in Buffalo now, you know, I'll see someone either we ran against or, you know, either came to one of our meets each. And it's like, they're like, you know, when you were running back then, were you like mentally, like, what did you think of? And I, I, I tell them, each, like, I was insane. Like, I feel yeah. like, like yeah. you know, I, I, when people ask me, what do you think about? Um, I, I, I kind of black out. Like, yeah. do you think, of, is that the same for you or like? Um, it's not, but that's not an uncommon thing to do okay. running. Lots of people, you know, everybody's a little bit different again. Right. And, and lots of very, um, I guess, uh, high level runners do essentially just yeah. have a blank slate for, for at least a good portion of the race. I am a little more myself. Uh, I always just went through a checklist. Okay. Uh, how hard am I breathing? How tight are my muscles? You know, some of my bad habits of carrying my arms higher. Um, I, I, I just go through that checklist every couple minutes. And then if I heard splits, I do that math in my head, uh, just to occupy me. So I wasn't, you know, I, I wasn't doing any hard mental things, but I, I just paid attention to what was going on, I guess within me more so right. than around and, me. Right. Like, and, and one notable guy that, you know, we still stay in touch and I'm very blessed to have him. You know, we still talk. We each, uh, Liam Rossler. Yeah. You remember. From um, Clarion. Yeah. Yep, from Clarion. He, um, we were just, we touched on the old days and I'm like, yeah, I kind of like would black out. And then when I get to where I thought we each was, I'd hear my split and then I go and it, it was amazing how my mind just shut back off. Like it just, right. Right. yeah. <laughs> but okay. Just keep going. Like it was, I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 it's just something. I, yeah. It's I, a hard, it, I mean, you know, running any athletic endeavor really, but r- running is just so pure. Um, it, it, I've heard it said, I guess I, I, I've heard it said from a hypnotist, right? Most running races, are a an exercise in self-hypnosis because we really wouldn't allow ourselves to do that if we didn't hypnotize ourselves which is essentially just reconverting um input right there's all sorts of pain signals coming to our brain and we're just reinterpreting those or just completely ignoring them We're, we're doing something with them and ignoring them is you know well one way to one way to get around it right no, it, yeah, I just, you know, yeah, it's something. But uh, we'll we'll move on here. Uh, you know, which I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but what sport do you enjoy more, basketball or running, doing slash slash coaching? That's a be... that's a really tough question for me. Right. And I no. <laughs> what I would my best answer is this. Yes, I like them both, probably equally as a player and runner, and coach of both sports. For totally different reasons. Okay. Um, like I said earlier, I'm a problem solver. There's totally different problems with running and basketball. Basketball, there's a few more X's and O's, right? Ch- chess game type problems. And running, again, just said the word a minute ago, is a very pure athletic endeavor. So the problems are, you know, what energy systems do we need? to make sure are working properly or what energy systems are we lacking that we need to work on? What do we need to work on up here? Right. And how are we going to put that together by the time we get to the end of a, of a season? What steps do we need to take? So um, I, I guess I just enjoy watching as much as I enjoy being a part of I enjoy watching the process of people doing things they didn't think they could do. Right. And right. I I, I gotta go ahead. Keep going. Wait, sorry. No, that that, that was good. Oh, okay. No, but uh, I I just gotta say you, and I, and I, I think back and I, and I feel bad at times because I I think I was very stubborn. Like sometimes we each, would you say, Stubborn isn't a bad thing, though, most of the time, in my estimation. Right. But I, I just I think back to 
there would be times that like we would do workouts and I was like, which uh, I I'm struggling like this. And you have, you have this way of like making, you know, someone believe in themselves. And, and I, and I hold on to that to this day. I always think back to like, we, I mean, we do seven thirties. I yeah. that, those can be anybody's spot. I, I don't care. <laughs> yep. I've never I mean, met, I've never met somebody who, who didn't, did, didn't feel particularly challenged by those, including myself. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're grueling. Yeah. No, but it, it just, um, you, you always just found a way to, you know, try to, you know, give confidence to somebody, you know, even when you didn't, they didn't even, I think you believed more in your athletes than they did themselves. I'm, well, I'm gonna, yeah, uh, <laughs> maybe so at, at times, at times, you know, maybe, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, but, uh, you know, including my, we're always capable of a little, at least a little bit more than we think we are. And right. you, I guess um, I've always been an optimist. I've, and I've, I've always believed, again, we're put in situations for a reason. And the more we challenge ourselves, the more we get out of it. So um, in terms of confidence, I guess my approach is, you know, it's better to try it and, and not be able to do it than to not try it and never find out if you can do it. So um, I guess that that part of that is maybe not. Usually I can see that people can can do more than they think they can. But sometimes I just think they can and think that it's worth a shot trying. And then we then we both know the answer. And usually right. it works out pretty well. Yeah, no, it, you know, I, and I mean, I think people that are watching, we can definitely say you've, there's been, you've had great teams and, and great athletes that have come and it, and it, I, I think a lot of them had the talent, but a lot of it was because of you. And well, I mean, if we don't have a workout system, we're kind of screwed in a way. Like, sure, <laughs> sure. That, it's true. But, right. you know, as you said, we, I have been, uh, infinitely blessed just to be a part of the crusader cross country and basketball programs and right. um you know there's certainly a culture of of growth and uh, embracing that challenge and that right. doesn't come for me completely anyway i i can plant a seed and say please rise to this challenge but that comes from every runner of ever coach. I don't think I've, I've experienced a runner who hasn't said, you know what, I'd like to embrace this challenge. And then everybody looks around and says, yeah, me too. And that, that, that has to be something that comes from, from them. And that act actually helps me to challenge myself more. You know, it's, it's a, it's a certainly a, a getting the, you know, we talk about snowballs rolling the, the wrong way. You, you have a bad thing happen and that you start building up a snowball rolling down a hill and you never get it stopped. But that happens with good stuff, too. And right. I think that's I, I guess I say it this way a lot mm -hmm. to, to parents. Right. Mm -hmm. pa parents are certainly much more responsible for for their children's uh, success and growth than I am. They model, create this fine uh, piece of granite uh, sculpture, right? And I take sandpaper and just kind of smooth out some rough edges here and there. And I think the same can be said of, of athletes. They're the ones who are building themselves. If every once in a while I take a piece of sandpaper and chip off a little rough edge, um, mm -hmm. it's helpful but it ultimately boils down to what, what every, what the athletes choose to do. It's not, it's not me for sure. It's you, Drew, right. and and all of your teammates. Yeah. Right. No, I, I and and you know we'll touch on later because you know there's a lot I I want to just you know thank yous and all that I want to touch on. But um, really though, which um, so the fulfillment in coaching is seeing the you know the growth. Yeah, I, I I would say that that is the most fulfilling thing for me in, in coaching is just watching watching people right. grow and not not always in, in ways that 
you would expect, right? Not It's not always directly running or basketball. Sometimes it's just realizing, um, it, you, you know, you, I, I guess you, you ask it about a story about yourself, right? Um, right. About you and I together. And the, oh, God. The, yeah. one, <laughs> the one thing that sticks out in my mind um, is it had to be your senior year. You know, you were, mm-hmm. you're, you're still a very competitive person. You were, you were really competitive as a young man. You did not want to lose ever. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was it our first home meet was against Kane. It was either our first home meet or our second home meet. And Chris Hunt, who was the district champion that year, if I remember correctly, was on yeah. the course and not too far ahead of you, but ahead of you. And he took a wrong turn. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, oh. purely competitive person just lets it go but not only were you competitive you did the right thing and you yelled at him and told him to come back and and not take the wrong turn and you did it as soon as you could not 15 seconds later right Right. and and that's that's not a running thing that that's a moral decision at some at some level you probably wouldn't have made that same decision as a eighth grader or a ninth grader. But by the time you were a senior, you grew and said, you know what, that's the right thing to do. I'd rather, I'd rather try to beat his best than beat him and say, I beat him when he's not at his best. And that, and that's a, that's a neat way to see somebody grow that has nothing to do with the running process. Right. No, I, 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 which it is amazing your memory. I, I, I totally forgot that even you brought you started you right when you said Chris. I'm like I remember now. I remember exactly what he was. No, but I think that's from, <clears throat> and and we you know can touch on a little bit. You, um, and I think a lot of people out there kind of knew that you were my, you, which you still are my idol. You know what I mean? You kind of took me under your wing and 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 guided me and. Um, you know, I think a lot of people, I touched on it <clears throat> on Nate Stice's podcast. Um, we spent a lot of mornings in your home room talking yeah, and I, I need, and I needed that. <laughs> I, 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 uh, remember those vividly as well yeah, and, right. and, and uh, re- really enjoyed those conversations, Drew. Yeah. 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 No, yeah almost it, every morning. Well, I, I just, and, and that's what I think people. I mean, they see you, you know, as a coach and in the community and stuff, but I, I don't think they truly get, and I told myself, I keep getting choked up, Weech. I, I told myself, um, <clears throat> I, I don't think they know how much you actually care about your athletes and the time you put in. And it's not even, hey, you know, this is your times, you know, this is, you know, how many free throws you made at practice. It's, you actually care, like yeah, about yeah. them mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, like all around. Like, so, it's just, <laughs> you don't get that. That's yeah. not a common thing, you know what I mean? So. Yeah. Well, again, I, I, I guess, you know, I have been infinitely blessed as a, as a human being. I've been given everything um, in, in this life. So, I, I, and I just think every human being is, is important. Um, sometimes that is not. Uh, Sometimes it cheats people too, because I'm I'm looking at <laughs> looking at two people right. and trying to do you know trying to do what's best for both of them, and then sometimes you just can't do that. But right. um, I do. I, I've never met a person that I that I don't think is is important, and if I can help them in some way, I I don't I can't explain that motivation, I guess. But that that's the way I exist. Yeah, no, and and if the if we had more of you out there, we this place, you know, the world would be, you know, such a better place. I mean, really. Um, but um, you know, which I, I like to touch on this too. With I mean, we've had other athletes come on. You're actually our first coach, which is awesome. Um, I, I think you're the honorable person that I would want to be the first coach. You know what I mean? So, um, to be the first coach. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if someone's going to go do a college sport, bleach, you know, what is one thing they need to keep in mind while going through that process, do you think? Well, I guess a, cu- a couple things come to mind. One, 
you really have to, and you can probably verify this. You you really have to make sure you you are have a fairly strong passion for the sport because it kind of becomes a job in college. It's not just something fun to do. Right. And the other side of that, the reason why it's not just something fun to do is, you know, high school coaches doing it for the love of coaching, at least at some level, that they're not making their living of it out of it. But a college coach is his livelihood depends on how you right. perform. Right. So, you know, it's not that he doesn't or she doesn't care about you, but mm-hmm. he or she needs you to perform. So they're they're kind of sticking their neck out by saying, come join our team right. um, to you. And I guess at some level you have to embrace that, you know, I, I need to step, stick my neck out for the coach a little bit too, and maybe step to step out of my comfort zone and ask, you know, so I guess those two things I would say are are two things every athlete needs to at least contemplate. One, do I really, really love this? Right. Um, Because if if you don't, yeah. um, if you're not sure, it's not a bad thing to jump in and and figure it out. You know, it's not something you have to do forever. You don't have to do it for four years. If you sign up, you know, one year at a time, essentially is what you're doing. But right. um, I, I would I would say those two things. Be passionate and make sure you understand that um, right. those coaches out there aren't right. exactly the same as high school coaches. They, yeah. Their livelihood depends on how you perform. Right. It, we're, it's, it's a beautiful transition into the next question, Weech. You know, um, you know, people, I think, and I don't know if if it's meant to be this way or if it's just how it happens. Um, But, you know, there's a pipeline from ECC to SB uh, to St. Bonaventure. Like there, like I think that I don't want to say it's common, but a lot of, there's been a lot of athletes over the year, even since I graduated, even from Mount County going up to St. Bonaventure. Do do you think um, you played a role in them wanting to go there? Like, like, Besides CCC, do you talk about St. Bonaventure a lot to other athletes in the area? I, I don't all too, all too much. I, I think part, part of that is its proximity, right? Right. Um, it's far enough away, but not too, too far away. So if you, if you like, if you like Al County, it's a, it's a great place to be. You're, you're, right. you're out of town. Right. Um, you're living life on your own for the first time, but if you want to come home anytime, it's, pretty pretty easy for your parents to get there and bring you home or if you have a car just come home um and it's you know it's it's a fairly prestigious as as you said you know the a10 is a is a pretty good league in just about any sport so it's it's i i don't think it really has much to do with me maybe maybe for for the cross country team oh, uh, God, yes. <laughs> at, at ECC, right. at least uh, puts a seed in people's heads, right? But right. I think otherwise, it's 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 great to. I'm I'm glad that people go up there. It's it's great to see local people right. um, taking advantage of such a wonderful place. Yeah. No. And and you know I think, <clears throat> and I and I didn't tell. I, I wanted to tell him that I was having you on, Coach McFarland. Um, but, you know, it, the thing I have to say is, is you know, there wasn't much of, I mean, there was a little bit of differences. We, we've talked about it. But, like, coming from you coaching to him, it, it kind of, that also was a home thing. Like, the, people don't really get that. Like, you go to high school, you, you might have a good coach, you know, and then you go to college and the guy, it's a totally different system. It's not, you right. know what I mean? So, I, I just, I think that plays a role, too. I mean, he's, you know. For sure. Your, yeah, and, it does. Hey, absolutely, right. it should that it should be another consideration when you're right. when you're going to college. Make sure make sure the coach is a good fit for you, even if he's gonna he or she's gonna be demanding. Right. Um, you want it to be demanding in in kind of a way you can manage, rather than you know. There's all sorts of different personalities out there. Yeah, yeah, no, and um, but the, you know the other thing too, um, which what do you think it is about ECC? Um, 
that is, you know, they're able to produce so many successful people both in and out of sports. Like, what, what do you think? Well, I, I guess it probably comes back to that, that word challenge again. Right. I, I think, um, you, you know, whether we admit it or not, or, uh, accept it or not, we, we all kind of do like to be challenged and yeah. it is only in being challenged that we ever grow and become who we should become. Right. Um, and if I, I think the ECC community, both uh, in school and at home, uh, does challenge people on all levels, spiritually and physically and and academically. And when you're used to being challenged, then most people figure out the challenge is a good thing rather than something to shy away from. So you just keep putting yourselves in those little a little bit more challenge here, a little bit more challenge there. And pretty soon you're, you know, what's the, what's the quote from St. Francis that I'm sure you heard a few times from, from me start by doing what's necessary, then what's possible. And suddenly you're doing the impossible. Right. And I think that's kind of the way things work around here. You, you take that first challenge and you, even right. if you're not successful, you figure out that it's kind of a, a good thing. And then right. you just keep ratcheting up those challenges. And, and that's the way life is, right? You get bigger and bigger challenges as you as you go. Right. Right. No, I, 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 I agree, Weech, because it's, <clears throat> I don't know, it's, um, college is a whole different world than high school. Um, but Bonaventure, for some reason, it, it didn't seem too challenging. I, I think also it was um, the staff up there and that they care like they like they I actually agree. care about you <laughs> yeah i i always described it as kind of covert right um yeah. that they're very relaxed the, that whole franciscan yes. uh aura kind of takes over the place nobody's in a in a you know in a in a hurry to push you in any direction whatsoever but they right. just drop little little hints that you should be moving in this direction they don't and, ask you to move in that direction, but they right. just keep nudging you in that direction. Right. I my my advisor was the same way, and then uh, you know, and I'll tell you, there was times I, I've never seen a college beach. Um, I met I had you know um, oh, I forget her. It was a sister. She she taught me in Spanish. I I could not figure out Spanish. I, I just I can't. And she's like, oh, you know, we can meet after at night, and I'm like. Oh, okay. Like she took time out of her, it was six o'clock at night. Right. She's like, Oh, I'll, I'll meet you at the hickey. And I'm like, I'm not, I've never heard this. Right, I've never right. heard that. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, your professor is going to meet with you and have dinner with you and go over what you're not understanding. Right. Like, I just, <laughs> I don't know. You know, yeah. and I tell people that story and they're like, yeah, I'm certainly the place draws some very, very high quality people, yeah. caring people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, but, um, yeah. And I think that, and it speaks to, you know, how you are, you know what I mean? And, and, and it was just, it was like, Oh, okay. Everybody basically up here, like we, Jay, like to just, yeah. <laughs> and that was inviting as well, because I was, you know, scared being home for the first time. Right. And I mean, I knew people, but it wasn't, you know, it was like, I'm not the best student. And then they're like, you know, they welcomed me with open, uh, open arms. And I'm like, this is not, what I've been hurt, you know, hearing about college is not like this. Right. But um, no, and I'm forever grateful for you and and talking about Bonaventure and and got to push me in that, you know, in that direction. But um, yeah. which one thing, and I think this is a very hot topic um, that people kind of want to know. Um, you know, who are some family members, coaches, educators who played a, a key role in your life growing up? Yeah, like like I. I I touched on earlier, I, everybody in my life has been pretty influential. I mean, my, my parents couldn't have, you know, you don't appreciate it at the time, but they couldn't have been better. That they, they, they were supportive, um, challenging, but, but supportive in, in all realms of life, you know, that spiritually and academically and uh, not, they, they weren't, challenging athletically but 
they they always you know said I should be doing my best, not just for myself, but for my teammates as well. My grandparents were were all, I, I only knew three of my grandparents, two grandmothers and grandfather. They were all always very supportive um, right. in sharing their faith and uh, really forming me in that regard. And, you know, from the time I was seven um, till I graduated from college, the coaches I had were all very, I guess I learned something from every one of them, just a little, little things. Sometimes it was big things, but I, I, I never had a coach who didn't eat little league coaches all taught me little things. Um, my, when I was seven, I, I ran, uh, just when I was six and seven years old for a couple of years. And, and he taught me some wonderful lessons. Pat Fleming was who that was. Um, okay. Coach Straub, obviously, um, right. was very influential at, at ECC. Joe Schlim was my junior high basketball coach. He, he really, uh, as you know, uh, um, I, I like to work hard. I enjoy right. that. And right. he really helped me embrace that. Uh, diving for loose balls and taking charges. And that, that was wonderful for me. He really helped, helped uh, form that. Uh, so, uh, you know, coach Huffman with his energy and enthusiasm, that, that's, that, that's very impactful. I, I can't, again, can't think of a coach who didn't uh, influence me. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, and I just, because, <clears throat> you know, everybody's like, you know, how did he mold into this person he is, you know, today that everybody gets, you know, the privilege of, of talking to or meeting, and um, it, it's just, it's, it's you know, and, and I touch on it myself, there's a lot of people that played a role, and I, I, I wish took more advice from the people, but <laughs> I tried to use some, some right. of what they gave me, but. <laughs> but I'm, uh, I'm no different, Drew. Uh, right. Right. But, uh, you know, uh, and then, you know, there's, you know, everybody wanted me to <clears throat> give a story of our, our time together, Weech. And, and I and I cannot think that if I put one story, it's not it's not fair. Um, but I just remember, you know, it was a, it was my freshman year um, and um, we had a very good team. Caleb Blecker was there. Mm -hmm. Joe Hoffman, um, Ryan Dage. Um, I, I'm trying to remember. Harley was still there. Uh, oh, uh, no, Harley, Harley just graduated. You're just right. graduated. OK, yep. yeah, because eighth grade. OK, yeah. But um, no, and, and I, I just remember it, I was so nervous about being in the top five. I, I just wanted to I, even though I was young, I wanted to. And, and you all you always made sure that I, you know, felt included in and in, um, even though I was not the oldest person on the team, you can still be impactful. And I, I, I still hold on to that because it's, it, it, I bring that in the job. I might not be the most qualified, but I can give my best and try to figure it out. Right. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. But, uh, that, that's just the one story I hold on to. And then, you know, the other stories of, um, oh my goodness, I'm trying to think of, uh, you know, even, I mean, during workouts, I, you know, talking me through it and, 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 um, just always, you know, I, I think it goes back to, you believed in me more than I believed in myself. And, um, you gave me the confidence. And I think that's why I went insane when people were like, you know, what, what do you think of, I, you know, we just kind of just programmed me to be this person. And that's what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. I'm, glad, I'm glad I could be helpful. Dude. Yeah, no. And I think, and you helped tone down the competitiveness because we, I, I still can't turn it off. So sure. I, I think I need more time with you or have you come around. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with being competitive, Drew. Right. <laughs> I'm competitive myself. You know, I, 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 I don't like to lose either. But right. I guess I've, as you have learned, know that it's not the end of the world. There are things more important than 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 winning. You know, be, being true to who you are is more important than winning right. um, in the overall scheme of things. Right. Right. Yeah. And I, and I think too, when, when people are on your team and I don't want to say they have to be the best runner on the team at the at year week or anything, but 
I, I felt like after when I would finish a race, I felt like I owed it to you to say good job to all the other athletes because that's what you would do if you were, you know what I mean? Like you would still, and, and like, <laughs> like, that's, I don't that, know. That's another example of something that comes from you because you, you didn't know me anything, but right. I did. Um, well, I still do. I owe you a lifetime of no, <laughs> you, you don't owe me anything. You, okay. you, you've, you've given me as much as I've given you. Right. Right. Now, now, but I don't know. I just, uh, yeah, there's, and I think there's a lot of people that are going to listen to this and be like, oh, there's Weech. You know what I mean? And I, I bet you they get teary. I just see in your face mm -hmm. because you, you're just very important to a lot of people and you still are. So, um, yeah. but uh, Weech, is there anything else, any questions you have for me or uh, anything you want to talk about? I, I can't, I can't think of any that, that I have oh. off the top of my head. I'm not very good with, I'll probably think of 10 by tomorrow morning, but I, <laughs> I I'm, I'm, that's one of my, I guess faults is uh, I'm not real good impromptu. That's, that's I usually re reflect on things and I'll, I'll, I'll be able to think of five questions half an hour from now, but okay. I can't think of any right now. Yeah. No, I, I will tell you if all the, if there's athletes listening to this point, um, the two mile is one of my most least favorite event, but I love it, yep. which doesn't make any sense at all. Um, yeah, it makes I saw, perfect sense to me. <laughs> I just, I, you know, I, I tell people, you know, nowadays and, and they're like, oh, you know, I ran in, in college and, you know, ran in high school. And, you know, when I was in high school, I did two mile. And they're like, how many laps is that around the track? And I'm like, eight. Why would you do that? Like, right. yeah. and now I, I'm like, I, I don't know why I did that. But right. back then, I, just, I love it. You know, sure. so, yeah. But, uh, but uh, we each, I, I cannot thank you enough. Um, I think a lot of people out there will enjoy to see your face and, and hear you talk about, you know, your journey through life. There's things I learned about you that I never knew, um, which was very cool. It was just nice to, you know, sit and talk with you. You know, we, we talked a lot over the years. Um, it was just nice to, you know, take time out of both our days. And, and I appreciate you taking time out of yours. You know, it's 10 o'clock right now. You probably want to go to bed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll get there sometime. Uh, it's all, it's always good to talk with you, Drew. I, you know, yeah. uh, we've had dinners at Haas's and, or, yeah. or elsewhere, uh, right. Right. that it's, it's just nice to sit down and catch up. I, like I said, I, everybody I've ever been around, I, I enjoy learning about who they are and, um, uh, it, it's don't always get to catch up with everybody. Uh, you know, it's, I guess it's been, you know, 20 something years at this point that I've been coaching. So that's, you know, a lot of, a lot of former at this point runners and, and, and players that I, when I see them, I'm, I'm overjoyed to, to uh, yeah. see what's going on in their lives. And, and uh, I guess just, again, see how they've grown um, since, right. since I've seen them last. So it's wonderful to catch up with you. Drew. Yes. And, uh, and thank no. you for, for always yeah. making the effort to reconnect. Yes. No, I, I, I don't think, and I, and I want to just say this to everybody that's listening. I, I think it's very important that you, you reach out to people each that, um, you know, gave a lot of effort and time into your life. And, and I don't think you should ever let those relationships sway because you know what I mean? Like, yeah, just talking to you right now, I'm going to have a good day tomorrow. Like I, it's it, something, you know, there could be a car accident in front of me on the way to work, but Hey, we're going to, I talked to we last night. I'm going to be all right. <laughs> like, and, so. and, and vice versa. Your, this conversation will help my day be better tomorrow too, Drew. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah. So uh, I'll just sign us off here. Weech. We could talk a little bit after um, I'll just stop the recording and then we'll, we'll be all good. Okay. Sounds great. All right. All right. All right, everybody. This was episode four uh, with uh, special guest Wee J. Fernand. Um, thank you again for listening. Um, uh, God bless. Have a good day. Have a good night. And again, this is Buckle Up With The Boys. Okay. And, um... <laughs>